Okay, so we're gonna do the FISBO boot camp. FISBO is for those of you that don't know, is for sale by owner. We're all pretty familiar with that term. So really it doesn't matter if you're a independent agent, a team agent, a buyer's agent, you can all benefit from visiting FISBOs, working FISBOs, uh, trying to bring those listings into the company. Uh, you might have a buyer for the FISBO and get paid, you know, three or four percent. There's a several several different streams of income you can get by working for sale by owner inventory. And it's really about creating relationships. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. I'll just get right into it. Okay, so FISBO Bootcamp. So really it's about creating uh, relationships and meeting people, right? So say for example, you're, there's a room filled with 80 people. Uh, each person wants you to sell and list their home, wants to sell and will list their home with a realtor. You have 20 minutes face to face with each person. So how many people can you think you can convince to hear your listing presentation? How many people of those 80 can you, can you convince to list with you? Uh, the percentage of your listings that will sell, the closed transactions procured from the room, an average GCI or closing, and your total GCI. So again, if there's 80 people and you think you can get 20 of those people to list with you, uh, and 18 of them are gonna sell and you're gonna make this much extra money from it. You know, if you're not getting proficient about uh, speaking to those people and get, having those face-to-face -face conversations, you, you're not gonna have the confidence to go out there and talk to them for sale by owners. So really think about that. Like if I had 80 opportunities to speak with someone about selling their house, how many of them would actually list with me and how many could I sell? The truth is you should never wake up and wonder who needs your services. Uh, we go through the dollar productive activities that we talked about in real estate perspective. Every day there's opportunity for you to go out and get business. There's always a saying in real estate, you wake up unemployed every day and you have to go find work. Right? It's pretty much true. As a self-employed real estate agent, uh, you, 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 if you don't show up for work that day, you don't get paid, right? No one's going to give you an hourly rate to stay at home if you're a realtor and not, not prospecting, not closing deals. So what is the course overview for for sale by owner bootcamp? Again, it's to teach you a proactive approach for effectively moving into relationships with people who have indicated a definite need to sell their home. So it's the one thing we know about for sale by owners, they want to sell their home. What's the expectation for the course? After this class, you should feel confident enough to visit and follow up with for sale by owners. And the result is gonna be a substantial increase in revenue. Here's the operational model. Uh, you should start seeing a theme here. We see the same operational model in every one of these programs. Uh, for this one, what the, the prospecting is gonna be the for sale by owner. Uh, that, that brings in a new prospect and you turn them into a seller and maybe a buyer. You know, a lot of times the for sale by owner is also buying a house. You procure their listings, you get a buyer agency contract signed with them. They put, you put them in your client care systems, follow up, you know, convert them, get their house sold, you know, sell them a house. And then you market to that sold relationship with a sold sign out front, door knocking the neighborhood. Hey, I sold your neighbor's house. Uh, internet postings. Hey, I sold the house at 123 Main Street. It was a first sale by owner that tried to sell for three months and they weren't having any luck and I was able to get it under contract. And of course, just listed cards. When you do list the for sale by owner, uh, direct mail, just listed cards to your sphere of influence, past clients and or the neighborhood. And those, when you're marketing to that sold relationship, all these things uh, in the bottom left here are gonna create new referrals. And you just keep going around clockwise in a circle for, through this operational model. Uh, the FISBO Bootcamp teaches the five step follow up method, which is a very complete and non threatening approach for working with for sale by owners. You learn how to proactively approach, follow up with, and close for sale by owners in a way that adds value to all. So the plan, scripts, and follow up materials are provided here in the course. And what is the financial security of working for sale by owners? There's the consistent phase, the efficient phase, and the proficient phase. So just starting out, uh, you're consistent, you know, you're okay with the scripts, you're okay with the follow-up. Uh, you say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop at 45 for sale by owners this, this, uh, this year. So that's 45 weeks out of the year, we're taking seven weeks off for vacation and holidays. So that's only one a week for, every, for, for, the, for the year. I mean, that's a pretty attainable goal, right? Um, just look on Zillow. There's new for sale by owners coming up every week, certainly more than one a week. Uh, but let's say you're gonna visit one a week. Um, 
I'm sorry, there's 45 weeks a year. You're going to do two visits a week. So that's 90 uh, a year. So again, look on Zillow, look on uh, even dry brown, look in the yard signs. You're going to see more than two for sale by owners a week that you could stop at. The appointment set rate is 15%. Uh, the total meetings are 14. The conversion rate is 50%. means you get seven of those that you talk to. And you, let's say you only sell half of the ones you get listed. So approximately four or so. The efficient phase, you know, same number of stops, same number of people you're talking to, you're getting better at setting appointments, you're getting, getting better at converting, and you're getting better at uh, selling the ones that you list because you become a better listing agent. And proficient, again, same number, uh, 90 visits a year, you get better at setting appointments, you get better at converting them to listings, and you get better at selling them because you become a better listing agent. So you could, uh, just starting out, you could plan on four new listings a year just by doing it consistently all the way up to 26 listings a year by being really good at the scripts and being really good at listing and selling property. So what does the no do have of for sale by owner visits? Uh, what do you need to know? You need to know the, the phone dialogue, the viewing dialogue, the closing dialogue, and the follow-up dialogue. What do you need to have? To have is all the physical things you need to have with you. you know, your tape measure, your clipboard, pen, your for sale by owner inventory sheet that you're going to fill out going through the house. A blank seller's disclosure statement. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, uh, did you know that seller's disclosures are required by Michigan State law? Oh, we didn't know that. Well, hey, I guess what? I brought a blank one for you. Uh, your for sale by owner follow-up packs, thank you notes, tracking sheets, and a map, uh, area map. If you want to have a physical map in your hand and draw a circle of, hey, here's, this, here's the area that I'm going to search today. So why visit a for sale by owner? Uh, because we know they need to sell their house, right? It's as easy as that. 100% of for sale by owners have an immediate desire to sell their home. Otherwise, they wouldn't have taken all the pictures themselves. They wouldn't have figured out how to use Zillow. They wouldn't have figured out how to upload all the pictures of Zillow. They wouldn't have spent time on Zillow or wherever else figure, trying to figure out the price. Uh, maybe they paid an appraiser to give them a price. Maybe they paid a photographer to, to do it. So whatever they've done to that point to where that for sale by owner shows up online, they have an immediate desire to sell their home. And we know that. That's the best part about talking to Zillow's or Fizbo's is that we know they want to sell. Uh, this coupled with the fact that there are six possible income streams from that for sale by owner relationship makes it the most dollar productive lead generation source. So what are the six, what are the six streams of income? First, you could sell the for sale by owner's home. You might go there and say, Hey, I want to, could I add your home to my for sale by owner inventory? I get new buyer clients every week and I just like to tell them about everything that's on the market. You might have a buyer. You might walk through and say, oh, you know what? I'm working with Mary Smith and I think this would be the perfect house for her. I'm going to uh, take all my notes. Do you mind if I take a couple more pictures? I'm going to call Mary when I get home. Mary buys the house. They pay you three or 4%. You could convert it to a listing, take the for sale by owner's listing. At some point, they might get tired of trying to sell it themselves. Third sort stream of income could be you could work the for sale by owner as a buyer. Like I said, maybe they feel they have it all under control selling their house, but they need you help need, need you to help them find a house and represent them because they don't want to deal with that end of it. They, they're just trying to save money on the physical part. They don't care if someone else pays you money when you sell them a house. So you could number three, you could get them as a buyer. Uh, you could get a referral from the for sale by owner. Like, hey, you know what? We really don't want to sell, but you know, we heard the the Smiths down the road are gonna sell and you know, they're, they're pretty old and they're, they're in Florida half the year. They could probably really use an agent. You should probably talk to them. So again, they could give you a referral for one of their neighbors that could sell. Um, you could get a referral for the, for the FISBO, like the, the for sale banner could say, you know what, I, hey, you, you probably had a lot of people stopping through here. Um, how about I leave some of my cards? If so, any of those buyers that come through here decide they don't like your house, but they want to work with an agent finding other homes, just give them my cards. You can get a referral that way or provide a service for fee. You know, they might call you and say, hey, guess what? I found my own buyer, but you stayed in touch with me. You know, I'm really busy and I don't want to handle all this paperwork. Can I pay you X amount of dollars to, to put this deal together for us and work as a transaction coordinator? A lot, of, a lot of people do that. So six ways you can make money by knocking on a for sale by owner's door. <clears throat> okay, so why do people go for sale by owner? Right, to save money, right? Wrong. If everyone just going to save you money, we went drive. All, we would all drive it around in like the most uh, Yugos, right? <laughs> Which a lot of you probably don't even know what a Yugo is. This uh, it was a car back in the '80s. It was like a cheap imported car. I think it cost like two thousand dollars or three thousand uh, dollars. People aren't always into just saving money. It's the perception of value. Uh, for sale by owners don't think a realtor. The realtors are worth what they're what they're charging for commission. Period. Uh, it's not about saving money. It's about 
okay, why should I, why am I going to pay someone $10,000 to sell my house when I think I can do it myself, right? They don't understand that, you know, homes sell for more with realtors than they do for sale by owners, all these things that the national stats tell us. They don't, that's why we're here. We need to show them the value in working with us uh, to get the, to get the listing. So it really is up to you over time to prove your value. Remember, this is about moving into relationships with for sale by owners, having them self-discover what working with you is gonna be like. And if they like what they see and hear, your opportunities to form a working relationship increase dramatically. If they perceive no value, you have no chance. The number one goal is to differentiate, differentiate yourself uh, from the competition. This means you must look, sound, and behave differently from the very beginning. So what are they hearing from everybody else that's calling them? Well, first of all, most people are going to call them from Zillow. They're not going to go knock on the door. Uh, you know what? Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, did you know that homes sell for 20% more with realtors and we only charge a 6% commission? Would you like to make an extra 14% selling your house? This is all they're hearing all day long. What is the benefit of working with a realtor? Not to, through all these stats, right? So they're not even saying what's the benefit of working with me. So again, we're acting differently. We're saying things differently. We're not, uh, this is a really non-threatening approach to getting the listing, right? We're not telling them, hey, you should work with us because we're awesome. We do this and this and this. We're going to get you 15% more than you're asking. And you only have to pay a six of that. You're going to put more money in your pocket, blah, 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 blah. That's what everybody else is telling them. So we need to figure out a way that, how do we help them self-discover what working with us is going to be like? So where should we start? Of course, finding the for sale by owner. Uh, drive by, you know, again, have that map in your car, draw a circle. Uh, hey, I'm going to drive around Adrian in these neighborhoods. I'm going to drive around Tecumseh. Uh, like we talked about it with your entrepreneur's mantra and your transactional goal. Um, you know, your, your transactional goal can be less if your average sales price is higher. So, hey, you know what? I'm going to work the Tecumseh area for, for sale by owners. I'm going to get really, really good at that. I'm going to get proficient at that and I'm going to nail it. And if I do that, I only need to sell 30 houses a year to make the money I wanna make instead of 50 houses a year. So again, pick your area that you wanna specialize in based on your income goal and your entrepreneur's mantra. So driving around, we do know that a lot of people listed online, but every now and then you'll see a for sale by owner sign in someone's yard and just, you know, they have it as no other place at all except a yard sign because they think they can sell it with a yard sign. So that's fine. We should start looking at those yard signs as a help wanted sign. Most people see a for sale by owner, most agents see a for sale by owner sign and run the other way. We need to say, see that for sale by owner sign as an opportunity and it's a, it's a help wanted sign to me. Drive by plan, you define your home base, uh, move into a relationship with the physicals in that area, identify all the neighborhoods within a four mile radius of home base using the area map to do that. So we're gonna start out small. We're gonna do a two mile radius, right? It's the city of Adrian, that'll get you around the entire city of Adrian. Okay, now we're going to move out four miles. Maybe we'll drive out in Adrian Township, Madison Township, some of the subdivisions out there. Six miles, you know, once, we, once we've exhausted everything in our two-mile radius, exhausted everything in our four-mile radius, we're going to move out to six miles or we're going to drive to a different city like, um, that's nearby. So keep expanding until, until you fulfill your performance standard. Uh, the two-mile search radius allows for more consistent follow-up, which is the key to your success and for sale by owner. So get really consistent with the two miles. Once you fill that, go to four. Once you fill that, go to six. So just keep expanding. And again, we talk about your pillars of income. If you make for sale by owners, working for sale by owners is one of your pillars of income, it is a really, really good way to make extra money make, and put that in your um, transactional goal. Finding for sale by owners, other sources, local newspapers, um, or you know, look up the website for the local newspaper. If there's not a lot of print. Uh, RedX.com is, is a service you can buy. That gives you an email or list every day of for sale by owners in your area. Craigslist, of course. Um, some people don't go all the way to Zillow. Sometimes they might just throw it up on Craigslist. Um, your, your other team members, uh, hey, if, if you guys, I know you guys don't want to work for sale by owners, but I love work, working for sale by owners. If you're out there showing houses and you see a physical sign, let me know about it. Take a picture of it. Take a picture of the address, whatever you can do. Uh, your trash service. You know, be, become friends with the guys that pick up your garbage, right? Hey, you guys are you guys go around this whole city all the time. You know, if you see any for sale by owners, yeah, give me a name and uh, ad give me an address and a phone number that's on a sign. You know, I'm going to give you a five dollar gift card or whatever. Uh, your mail carrier, talk to your mail carrier. They're walking all over all over your market area every day. 
hey, if you're CLA for sale by owners, let me know. I'll give you a $5 uh, Starbucks gift card or $10 Starbucks gift card for everyone you bring me, whether they, whether they convert or not. Uh, your success with Fizzbowls will be directly related to your willingness to, product, to be productively active and to follow up. Remember, the fortune is in the follow up. You're not going to knock on the door one time. Hey, can I add you to my Fizbo inventory? Great. Let me measure some rooms. All right. See you later. You never talk to them again, right? What's the point in that? The fortune is in the follow-up. We're not going to knock on the door one time and never speak to these people again. That's not going to, that's not, that's never going to get you a listing. So follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. So what is our five-step follow-up system? <clears throat> we'll go through in more detail in the following pages, but number one, you're going to visit it with your inventory sheet and a blank seller's disclosure. Step two, you're going to hand deliver part one of the physical guide, 100 ways to sell your home. These are all supplemental materials that I can email you after the, after the call. Step three, part two of the physical guide, the money. It talks about title insurance, your net sheet, what state and county transfer tax, you know, how much, you know, all the closing costs you need to consider. Uh, part three of the physical guide, checklist. Here's your moving checklist. Here's what you need to plan for to move. Here's what you need to plan for uh, for your closing, all these kind of things. And the follow-up phone calls, so you're going to follow up with phone calls until it's either listed by someone, hopefully you, or it's sold. So that's the five steps. We're going to keep talking to them consistently until it gets listed or we see that it's sold. Or they tell us, hey, you know what? I sold it. We're closing next week. Hey, congratulations. Did you find a house yet? Because I could still help you find a home if you're looking for a buyer's agent. So remember that. So don't ever give up. We're going to call them until that house is no longer on the market or hopefully the goal is to list it. One of the goals is to list it. Some of the other goals are, are, are other five streams of income. <clears throat> Remember, every time you get face-to-face -face with a for sale by owner, you must give them an item of value. Uh, it is something that will help them in their attempts to sell their home. Remember, we're, we're just extending the, the olive branch, right? Hey, it's great you want to sell your house yourself. I'm sure you're totally qualified. I just want to add your listing to my for sale by owner inventory so I can tell my buyer clients about it. Uh, so we're going to keep giving them information. Hey, here's, here's a guide. Here's 100 things in this guide I got I prepared. This is 100 ways to help sell your home for more money. I thought you could find this helpful. Giving them stuff, giving them items of value that are going to help them. Because uh, what are, again, what are, other, what are other agents doing out there? They're just regurgitating the same stats. So, hey, you can sell your house for 20% 20, 20 more if you list with a realtor. That's what NAR says. Hey, you know that you can sell your house uh, in a quarter of the time that it takes if you list it for sale by owner. That's what the stats say. So again, we're not doing all those things. We're giving them items of value and creating a relationship. <clears throat> the importance of following up. Um, so there are maybe, there may be not other people in your market that are working for sale by owners, but guess what? Half of them are going to give up after the first week. You know, realtors generally, real estate agents in general are looking for that one shiny ball, that shiny object that's going to close in the next 30 days. If you're not going to close in 30 days, then boop, I'm off to the next one. So remember, half of your competition is going to give up after week one, 75% will give up after week two, 90% will give up after week three, and after, after week four, there's nobody else talking to these people except for you. So that's where, that's where you win. You win in week three and four when no one else has even talked to them, but you keep talking to them and bringing them items of value. Step one, uh, the initial test, approach the front door prepared with appropriate tools. You have your clipboard, you have your blank uh, inventory data sheet that you're, you're going to fill out with the, the house information, a blank seller's disclosure, uh, your first item of, item of value, pen, your tape measure, your laser, however you want to do it, and some business cards because you're, you you're going to leave business cards behind because I'm sure you have a lot of people that you're showing your house to. Can you do me a favor? Here's five or six of my business cards. If you have some buyers come through that don't like your house for whatever reason, uh, please give them my card. I'd love to work with them. So knock on the front door. Hey, my name is Jeff with Remax Main Street Realty. And I noticed your home is for sale. You know, point to the sign over your shoulder, whatever you want to do. Uh, hey, would you mind if I came in, viewed the home and took some measurements so I can add it to my for sale by owner inventory? Again, if they're not there, uh, do not leave a card. It shouldn't even look like you were there. We're going we're gonna to knock on the door until somebody answers. So if they're not there that day, take a note. You know, I'm coming back tomorrow at a different time because they're not home at 10 o'clock in the morning. Maybe they're going to be here at 4. So if they're not home, do not leave a card. Try again the next day. So they might say, what is that? Yeah, can I add your home, can I add your home to my for sale by owner inventory? Well, what is that? Is, is one of the responses you'll probably hear. You know, I have a process that I use with all my buyers that we uncover the criteria for the perfect home. 
I then take that criteria and match it to homes both in the MLS and in my for sale by owner inventory to make sure the buyers who work with me get the home they want and more importantly, want the home they get. So what do you say? Would you like preferred exposure or the preferred exposure to a focus group of home buyers? Because you know what, my home buyers, they're gonna buy a house. They're ready to go. Uh, the second response could be, well, do you have any buyers now? You may or may not. So again, we don't lie to get listings. We don't lie to expireds when you try to call them saying we have a buyer. We don't lie to for sale by owners. So you may have a buyer. You may say, yeah, you know what, maybe I do, but I haven't seen your house. Or you could say, I'm currently working with the buyers and receive calls on a daily basis. However, I need to view your home and take some measurements so I can match your home to the criteria of each of my buyers. So again, you're not lying. You're not saying, hey, yes, I have a buyer, but I need to see it first. You know, I, yeah, you know what, I might. I might have a buyer, I may not have a buyer. I haven't been inside your house yet. I need to come in, take a look around, then I'll see if it matches anybody that I'm working with. The third response you can get, we don't wanna work with a realtor. You know, I appreciate that. I understand your concern. The reason for my visit today is to not list your home. I would simply like the opportunity to help you sell it. All I wanna do is come in, view the home, take a few measurements, no pressure, uh, no obligation, come on, what do you have to lose? Well, I guess nothing to lose, right? If you're gonna look at my house and you might have a buyer for it, you know, we can talk about the, the money later. So again, three, just be, you know, practice these when you're doing your role playing, because these are the, the most likely three different things that they're gonna say when you ask to come in to add, add the house to your for sale by owner inventory. Uh, if they say, no, you can't come in, you'll know, offer them your first item of value, seller's disclosure statement. And explain what it is if they don't know. Hey, did you know that uh, in the state of Michigan, a seller's disclosure statement is required? Well, I didn't know that. Well, hey, great. Guess what? I brought a, a blank one here for you. Here's a blank one to fill out. Read through the instructions. Let me know if you need anything. I wish you great success in the sale of your home. Here's my card. If there's ever anything I can do for you or anyone you know, please don't hesitate to call. Uh, believe it or not, you're, you, you might think your goal was not accomplished because they told you to go away, but your goal was accomplished. You got face to face with a, with a for sale by owner. That's what, you're, that's what you set out to do that day was, you know what? I need to talk to that person and start creating that relationship. Your goal wasn't really necessarily to get inside and measure all the rooms. That was, that was a bonus, right? Hey, if they let me in, I can take a look around and see if I have a buyer, that'd be awesome. But my goal right now is to knock on the door and have a conversation and start building that relationship. So when they need me, they remember me. Uh, if you prefer to call or the for sale by owner side side and reads by appointment only, then use the following phone dialogue. You know, hi, my name is Jeff with Remax. I noticed your home is for sale. Would you mind if I made an appointment to come out and view the home so I can add it to my for sale by owner inventory? And they might go through the same questions. You know, what is that? Um, I don't want to work with a realtor, whatever they're going to say. Do you have any buyers now? So we're going to say the same thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm currently working with buyers and receive a calls on day, receive calls on a daily basis, I, but I need to see your home so I can match it with one of my buyers. So again, the same three responses to the same three questions. But remember, if you're gonna, if you're gonna call instead of, um, instead of knocking on the door, it's easier for them to reject you over the phone. If they have a for sale by owner listed up on Zillow and they have it, and it does not say by appointment only, go knock on the door. It's gonna be easier to, to have that conversation with them. Because it's just easier for people to say no over the phone. So once, once inside the home, we're gonna start building rapport. Hey, thanks for allowing me the opportunity to view your home. What I would like to do is take a tour of the home, take some notes, measure the rooms, and spend my experience that room measurements are very important to buyers, especially bedrooms. It'll be great if as we walk around, you pretend I'm a buyer and point out what you feel are the selling features of the home. I would also appreciate it if you could document uh, the dimensions as I measure each room. Uh, so hey, you know, get, we're gonna get them participated in the process. Hey, take, here, take my pen and clipboard. You know, I'm gonna measure these rooms. Can you write those in for me? Because I, I need to I need to deal with the uh, the tool that I'm using or the tape measure that I'm using. Uh, as, as you tour the home, just engage in conversation. Uh, get, so get them to start being comfortable talking to you, sharing information with you. Uh, so in addition to discussing the room features, you should also be building rapport around non-threatening topics that most people enjoy discussing. Um, if you're a natural at it, it comes easy. If not, I use questions to get the conversation moving in a positive direction. How are you originally from this area? How long have you lived in this area? What well, brought you to this area? Why are you moving? You know, just these are just conversation starters to like start getting them talking. You know, once people start talking, 
you know, they get more comfortable with you, the more they're gonna talk. And remember the person asking the questions is always in control of the conversation. So you keep asking questions, shut your mouth and listen to what they have to say. They ask another question, stop talking and listen to what they have to say. So keep asking questions, they keep talking, you can build that relationship. And again, the more, you, the more, the better relationship you build, the more likely they are to give you the listing or refer your buyers or refer you business or work with you as their buyer's agent when they're looking for the next house. Closing, the, after closing visit number one, once you've turned the home, measured the rooms, offer your item of value, uh, you know, we're having, gonna have a seller's disclosure statement uh, uh, script. Have you prepared a seller's disclosure statement? Well, what's that? Well, it discloses everything good and bad about the house, the current condition, and it's actually required by state law. If you don't have one, guess what? I brought a blank one with me. Here, here it is. So again, practice these scripts when you're role playing. Closing the initial visit, really appreciate you allowing me the opportunity to view your home. I wish you great success in the sale. Remember, we're not asking for the listing at all. We're not, we're not going to ask for the listing on any of these appointments until we get, get further in. We're not asking for the listing. We just they got, we got invited in, we toured the home, our goal was accomplished. Wish you great success in the sale. I'd like to touch with you basically weekly so I can keep the information on your home up to date. Would that be okay? Would you like me to make copies of this sheet for you? So they, they might have a listing sheet they prepare themselves. Uh, would you like me to take make copies of the seller's disclosure statement for you and drop them back off tomorrow so you can hand them off to potential buyers? Man, that would be great. Yeah, you know, we don't have a printer at home. I didn't know what I was gonna do. Hey, no problem. Actually, you know, let me take that. I'll go back to my office. I'll make a dozen copies. I'll drop them back off tomorrow. How does that sound? Again, thanks for your time. If there's ever anything I can do for you or anyone you know, please don't hesitate to call. Hand them your business card and you're done. You didn't ask for that listing one single time during that whole visit. And they, they're kind of, they're probably kind of taken back, right? They're like, wow, that was kind of weird. We've got calls from half a dozen realtors and all they keep doing is telling us why they, we should have to list, list with them. And this person didn't do any of that. That was, that was a really nice conversation. That was awesome. Again, you just, you set yourself apart and they think that they already know that you're different and that working with you would be different than working with the other agents that are calling them. Uh, so here, this is in the booklet that I emailed out. You can print this or create your own if you like, if you want to do something different. Now, just the basic information on the house, square footage, your build, uh, room measurements, all that kind of stuff. Uh, your next uh, step, step two, is your visit number two. On your next scheduled follow-up day, again, we're going to plan our week, our perfect week, and what, are, what days are we going to drive by and visit for sale by owners. So on the next scheduled day, uh, do your follow-up and deliver part one of the for sale by owner guide 100 ways to sell your home fast visit number two dialogue hey I, this will probably work better if you record and remember what time of day they were home the first time you stopped by because if they were home at 10 in the morning then you could probably count on them being at home at 10 in the morning again um, so just try to keep that keep that in your notes however you're going to keep track of your your visits yeah hey, i just happened to be in the neighborhood i thought i would drop this off uh, you know, I definitely think this can help you in the sale of your home. How did it go this week? Oh, it went okay. You know, we haven't had, we had one person look at it. They didn't really seem too interested. They, they're only here 10 minutes, so we're not really sure. They won't call us back. Oh, that's a bummer. You know, I hate it when people do that. Whatever, just, we're going to, so, you know, here's a script here. We don't have to stick to the script. We're just going to, again, we're just creating conversation. We're creating relationships. How did it go this week? Listen to all their complaints about how it went this week. Are there any changes to the information you provided me? So the information they provided you was what? You know, the price, uh, terms they want, things like that. Yeah, actually, you know what? We decided we're gonna drop the price by $1,000. Okay, great. I, I'll make, I'll put my notes, I'll put that in my notes. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with? They might say, yeah, you know what? Um, say, for example, they did have a lot of showings that week. You know what? We went through all of those seller's disclosure statements you, you gave us. Can you make us some more copies? That'd be awesome. <coughs> yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll go back to my office. I'll, I'll print off a dozen. I'll drop them back off tomorrow. Remember, if there's, so is there, if there's ever anything you need, please don't hesitate to call. <clears throat> so if they're not home the second time, it's okay to leave something. You've already, you've already started building that relationship, so you've already talked to them. If they're not home on a visit number two, that's fine. <coughs> put put over whatever item of value you're leaving in an envelope, place it at the front door. Um, they don't need your card. They're going to know it's from you, right? Okay, it's going to say Premax on it or it might even have your name on. If you want to modify the, the document, the cover page, put your name on it. You don't need to you know, waste another card or tape it to the door. 
but <coughs> you can call them later that day or the next day just to verify they received it. You know, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, I dropped off uh, I dropped off a 100 ways to help sell your home faster guide. I thought just want to make sure you got it. And then again, send another thank you note. Step three is visit number three. Seven days after visit two, go back and hand deliver part two of the for sale by owner guide, the money guide, which talks about title insurance. It talks about closing costs. It talks about state and county transfer tax, all those things that they need to pay for. Yeah, I was thinking about you the other day and I thought I would drop this off. How did it go this week? Oh, it went terrible. No one looked at the house again. Wow, that's that's terrible. I can't believe it. Such a such a great house. Are there any changes to the information? Yeah, you know what? We're not getting showings. We dropped the price another five thousand dollars. Okay, I'll, I'll put that in my notes and I'll let my uh, buyer clients know that I'm talking to on a, on a daily basis. Is there anything else I can help you with? You know, we're just going to keep asking these questions and keep letting them talk. And it, because at one of these points, you know, we're, they're going to start saying, you know, this is, you know, this is harder than I thought, man. Maybe, maybe we should start talking about listing this house. This, that could happen at visit two. It could be happen at visit five. We don't know. But we're just asking these same questions every week. How do they go? Is there anything I can help you with? If you need anything, please don't hesitate to call. I'm always here. Again, if they're not home at visit number three, go ahead and place you know the guide in the, in the front door. You don't need to leave a card. They already know it's from you. Call them to verify they received it and send another thank you note. Step four is visit number four. Seven days after visit three, go back and hand deliver part three. Remember, we're, we're like, we're just being consistent. We're showing them that we're a consistent real estate agent, that we do what we say we're going to do, that we, we care about them selling their house and that we're providing value. Because remember, they're not necessarily not using a realtor because they don't want to pay a commission. They're not using a realtor because they don't understand the value in working with a real estate agent. We're showing them the value of working with a real estate agent. Uh, physical guide number three, your checklist on uh, prepare for moving day. Since you're getting closer to sell your home, I thought this would be a value to you. Remember, we're trying to solicit a frustrated response. Now that, you're, now that you're getting to know each other better, they're more likely to open up a little bit. You might hear things like, you know, I really wanted to use a realtor, but my wife had a bad experience selling a home before we got together. Uh, she just thinks you guys are all the same, aren't worth 6%. You know, they may start telling you, uh, they're going to start opening up a little bit by visit number four, uh, especially when you say something like, Hey, since you're getting closer to sell your home, I thought this would be a value to you. Getting closer to sell my home, not a single person has looked at it in the last five weeks. Can't believe it. <laughs> so again, we're trying to solicit that frustration uh, from them because that opens the door for talking about listing their house. How did it go this week? Terrible week again. Nobody looked at the house or how did it go this week? You know, somebody looked at the house and they offered us $50,000 less than we're asking. That's crazy. Wow, that's nuts. Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, are there any changes? If you need anything, call. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, if they're not home, leave it in the door, call them to verify they got it, send them another thank you note. Uh, step five, part of the step five are the follow-up calls. Seven days after visit four, this is when we start calling. Okay, we don't need to stop by their house anymore. We've been there four times. You know, We've developed a good relationship with them. Phone calls from here on out are perfectly fine. So but we're gonna call every week until they list with us, they list with someone else, or they sell the house. This is Jeff with Remax, just touching basically, how did it go this week? <coughs> Excuse me. Same response, you know, it was terrible, nobody looked at it, someone offered us, gave us a bad offer, whatever it was. Any changes I should be aware of? Nope, no changes. We're tired of dropping the price. We're not going any lower, same as it was last week. Anything I can help you with? If you need anything, please don't hesitate to call. Uh, so again, step five is continuing the follow-up calls. It's week six, week seven, week eight. If you are still around in the eighth week, a relationship has been formed with that person and that person has self-discovered that you are different from everybody else. Closing them to the listing conversation. Remember, we're asking those questions every week. Uh, how did it go this week? Hey, since you're getting closer to selling your home, they're gonna start opening up and showing their frustration in, in the home selling process. Uh, so after using the phrase like, you know, hey, since you're getting closer to selling your home, I thought this would be of use for you. Don't be surprised if they say, start asking you a lot of questions like, why hasn't our house sold? Remember, what, what, are our core, what are our core listing beliefs? One of our core listing beliefs, homes sell for two reasons, price and exposure. We to tell them that, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, you understand that home, we believe the homes sell for two reasons, price and exposure. You could have a great price, 
But if the marketing's not awesome, it's not going to sell. You might have awesome marketing, uh, but if it's overpriced, it's still not going to sell. Should we drop the price? But you know what? I, I did happen to prepare a market analysis based on what, I'm, uh, what I've seen in the marketplace. Let me see if I can uh, get that emailed over to you later. What should we do? How's the market? The market's great. I can't believe your house hasn't sold. What they're really saying is like, please close me, please. I want to list my house. I'm tired of this, frustrated. Why hasn't our house sold? Does everybody hate it? What's going on? So again, just look for these cues. They're opening up the door and they're like basically telling you at this point, you know, you know, please, please close me. Please convert me to a listing. Please, please do something. I need some help. <clears throat> you know, it sounds to me that maybe time for us to get together and discuss exactly what you need in the sale of your home and see if we can create a win-win working relationship. Would you agree? Well, they may, yeah, okay, maybe we could talk about it. No, we still blah, 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 whatever their excuse might be. You know what, if I can get you what you need in the sale of your home by forming a working relationship with me, wouldn't you consider it? If at the end of our conversation, you feel you are going to lose, lose, uh, you're gonna lose by partnering with me, simply say, not at this time. Worst case scenario is you will be more informed about the options you have in the sale of your home. Besides, you should never say no until you know what you're saying no to, right? There may be opportunities available to you that you never knew existed. I mean, really, what do you have to lose? Remember, they're seven or eight or nine weeks into trying to sell their house. What do you have to lose by having a 30 minute or 60 minute conversation with me about selling your house? Uh, the value for value dialogue. Uh, don't be surprised if they keep, if they ask you at some point of when you keep stopping by and keep calling, um, they're gonna start getting skeptical, right? Because the first two weeks of their for sale by owner listing, you know, half a dozen realtors call them, telling them why should they should list with a realtor, that they're gonna make more money and blah, 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 blah. But you've stuck around for two months now, stopping by, giving them items of value, calling them every week to see how it's going. Why are you doing this? What's, what's in it for you? I mean, I know you guys work on commission. Well, I, I do this because I believe in a win-win relationship. If I give you things of value to help you sell your home, that's a definite win for you, right? Well, of course it is. Well, if you happen to run across someone who wants to sell a home that doesn't wanna go for sale by owner, you know, you may think of me, uh, and if you do, that's a definite win for me, right? See, there, there's something, sometimes there's just value in knowing people. So again, it's not, we're not talking about getting their listing. And they, and they might ask you this question at any point. They might say this in week two, they might say this in week eight. Like, why are you doing this for me? Because you're not getting paid and you guys work on commission. Well, hey, you know what? I just believe in creating relationships because, you know, I'm going to help you sell your house, but, you know, you might know someone uh, later on down the road that you can refer to me because remember me. That sounds like a win-win to me, right? Uh, here's some sample thank you notes that are in your packet, uh, just some of the supplemental materials. Uh, if they sell their home, congratulations on the sale of your home. You should feel proud of this great accomplishment. Although we didn't get to do uh, develop a business relationship together, I did enjoy our visits together as well as the conversations on the phone. And if I can ever be of service to you or anyone you know, please feel free to contact me. Congratulations again. That, that shows that you're not a sore loser because they still might be skeptical all this time that you're stopping by their house, but you know, that, that person's only stopping by because they want a listing. They might say they don't, but that's why, that's why these realtors do these things, right? They, they, what they really want is the listing. So if they do sell the house without you, without a realtor, congratulate them. Hey, it's awesome. So glad you sold your house. If there's ever anything I can do for you in the future or, or for anyone you know, please let me know. They're gonna remember that, right? They're gonna remember that relationship they're gonna remember that you think you, you congratulated them on selling your house when you didn't even get the listing. So don't forget to do that. Sample thank you notes after the initial visit. You know, thanks for uh, taking the time to show me your home. I really enjoyed meeting you and wish you much success in the sale. If I can ever be of help to you or anyone you know, please don't hesitate to call again. Not threatening, we're not asking for the listing. We're just simply saying, hey, thanks for letting the store your home. That was awesome. Uh, so these are just some samples, you know, write them in your own words, write what you would naturally say. But again, we're just showing gratitude and thankfulness for, for, for what they've done for us. Uh, sample note, sample note number two, again, you can read through these on your own time in the packet or do something. Uh, again, when we're talking about this, the dialogues and the thank you notes, we just need to understand the concept of why we're sending the note or why we're saying the dialogue. And then we're going to put it in our own words that sounds like us because we don't want to all sound like robots or like we're reading the script. Uh, again, uh, thank you note for visit number three after you drop off the item of value. Thank you note for visit four. Uh, advanced dialogue. So if you guys are practicing doing your role playing, practicing scripts, um, you know, here's some other uh, questions that you can practice with each other because there might 
gets some more advanced dialogue. You know, how many times has the home been shown? How many offers have you received? How long has it been on the market? You know, what kind of feedback are you getting from the people that are going through your home? Because like, you know, a lot of real estate agents don't even get good feedback from, you know, when homes are in the MLS. So I can guarantee most for sale by owners are probably getting zero feedback. They're showing their home, that person looking through their house, then they never talk to them again. They have no idea why they, you know, make an offer. So again, um, when we have that listening conversation, you can talk about that. Hey, you know what? We're going to get feedback every week, send you a summary. You know, we do our best to get feedback from agents. We get it 90% of the time, but um, it's, it's better than what you've been getting, right? Because you told me before that you've shown your house 10 times and no one's giving you any feedback. So this is part of the listing service we provide is, is our showing time service and our feedback. <clears throat> Advanced dialogue for price-related questions. Uh, again, practice these when you guys are doing your role playing. Uh, closing for price related questions. Um, you know, do you think the information will be of value to and could help you in your attempts to sell your home? Again, just more advanced advanced dialogue that we can practice and get good at. Remember, we're shooting to, to go from consistent to efficient to proficient. So the better you get at this, the more you practice, the more closings and more listings you're going to have. And we're not even talking about the listings, you know, an extra 26 listings a year from visiting for sale by owners. That doesn't count the, the buyer leads you get from the sign, the buyer leads you get from Zillow. You know, the Fizzbos that might be buyers themselves. You know, we're just, when we're talking about the efficient phase and extra 26 listings, you know, think about the another 26 um, sales from the buyers that you're going to get from all of these. So 52 a year, potentially. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the other advanced dialogue, the opportunity when you're working with them as a buyer. You know, how do we, how do we convert them from, um, into a buyer client instead of a listing client? So we're just going to basically put them through what we learned in the buyer conversion. You know, how, how are you going about finding your perfect home? That's what we say to people at open houses, right? When we're, when we're doing the label the looker method. You know, then we're going to talk about the proactive process, the benefits of working with an agent, those kind of things. You know, and the best part of working with a buyer's agent is you don't have to pay them any money. Because remember, we think that, you know, they're, they're, not they're not necessarily trying to save money on commission because they're just trying to save money. They're trying to save money on commission because they don't see value in working with a real estate agent and paying them 6% or 5% or whatever, uh, whatever they think in their head they have to pay somebody. So, hey, you know what? The best part of working with me as your buyer's agent is it doesn't cost you a dime. You know, the listing agent pays me half the commission. Uh, our, again, uh, so are you willing to pay me a commission if I bring, if I bring a buyer? Um, so we can have that conversation. The visible tracking sheet, this is perfect. Um, so you can create one, print it out, do one for every um, every week. Uh, how many attempts did you make? How many visits did you get? How many appointments were set? How many meetings did you have? And how many listings did you get from the tours that week? Keep Remember, if you track it, it gets better. Whatever you track improves. So if you're just going to, hey, I'm going to, I decided on Wednesday at 10 o'clock, I'm going to go visit five for sale by owners. Then you don't do it for another five weeks. You're going to see zero results. So remember, track it, do it consistently, do it every week, keep track of it, keep track of what you're converting, because if you could track of, you know, I stopped by 20 for sale by owners and I only got one listing after four weeks, that's terrible. I'm, I need to do something better in my conversion because out of 20, I should be getting more than one. And just definitions to filling out the tracker. And that is it. Thank you for attending for Sale by Owner Bootcamp. I will email you out the supplemental materials, the, the FISBO guide one, two, and three. And so you have your items of value, stop in the office, print them off. Um, if you do this consistently, you're gonna win. You're gonna get more listings. More listings equals more buyers and more closings all over if you just work this and do this consistently. So make, make working for Sale by Owners one of your pillars of income. It doesn't matter if you're a buyer's agent, if you're a solo agent, you can still benefit from following this program uh, and because you're going to get, you know, other referrals. For. Remember, there's six streams of income from knocking on a for sale by owner's door. So don't forget that. You're not there to get the listing. You're there to make money, and it could be one of any six ways. So I will talk to you soon, and thanks for watching. And I'm going to end this. Hey, I like, like, I like it when I come back and there's people left. All right.